This summer's rains have been a welcome sight across Oklahoma, but that's not to say they haven't ushered in a few problems. For more, we head to the North Range. The good thing about a drought is nothing grows, including brush. It just doesn't grow well. We get all these good rains this year, here comes the brush. Oklahoma State University's North Range Research Station has received more than nine inches of rainfall in the past 30 days, more than 37 inches for the year. This rainfall was sorely needed for the ponds and native grass, but it has caused a surge of brush, normally controlled through prescribed fire. The challenge with us here, like, like most other ranches, is that we're just not always able to burn in the time window that, that we'd like to, whether it's from lack of fuel or from a, you know, a burn ban, the conditions, whether it's too, too wet or too windy or whatever. And so you know, we're just not always able to get one in. We know from over 30 years of research, whether it's in western Oklahoma or eastern Oklahoma, it doesn't matter that that three-year fire frequency is kind of the tipping point on brush control. If we can burn on the average of every three years, this brush will never increase. It'll kind of stay where it is. If we br uh, burn more frequently than every three years, like every two years or annually, we'll really reduce the brush. The thing about prescribed fire is, like with stalker cattle, we can expect a 10 to 15 percent gain just from the fire. You don't get that with anything else, and particularly related to the cost. I mean, there's nothing that takes the place of fire. But the drought of the last three years left the grass grazed down, so there was little fuel for fire. And even when there was grass to graze, burn bans prevented the practice, and the burn cycle was broken. When the rain finally came, so did the brush. This is sand plum. Uh, this is a plant that occurs usually in thickets. It doesn't expand very rapidly. If you burn it very, uh, very much at all, it pretty much goes away. It doesn't respond real well to fire. Without fire, though, herbicide is the next control option. You can see this plant was sprayed several weeks ago, and it's browned up really nice. Right here, we have a plant called Mexican plum. It's the same, same genus as sand plum, but it makes kind of a small tree. It doesn't form big thickets. It's got a very rough and hairy leaf, and it's pretty hard to control. You can see, though, we did get some control where the herbicide hit, but not over the whole plant. Very likely, this won't kill that plant because the whole plant needed to be covered. Right next to it is buckbrush, which is a plant that's very easy to control if we catch it early in the spring, right after it goes to full leaf. You have about a two-week period you can hit with it, and a 2-4 deal to kill it dead in a hammer. Any time outside that two-week window, you can't hardly touch it. Right next to that's Cerisa lespedeza, which is one of the main things they're interested in trying to control out here. Got real nice control on it. And what we like to see on herbicide is those plants to gradually yellow over a four or five day period. If you use a high rate and don't stick to the label, if you go off label and use too much herbicide, you'll tend to incinerate these plants, burn the leaves off of them, and they won't control it at all. So this is what we like to see. Typically with Cerisa, we start those applications around June 15th and they'll conclude around August the 15th in, in a typical scenario. But this summer, because of these environmental conditions, uh, we're going to extend that season probably into September. Uh, we, we ordinarily want to wait until Cerisa has bloomed out. It's kind of the, the ideal time for making herbicide applications. And because of the, uh, the uh, mild temperatures, the extra rain, we're going to be able to make those applications just because physiologically everything was set back about two to three weeks early on and sometimes uh, it's up to four to six weeks behind a normal year. Trent Enman with Dow AgriSciences tells us it is key to understand what plants you have and which ones you want to control. Yeah, it's really important to, to identify what you have and then at that point then you can match the best herbicide solution with that, with that weed or, or brush problem. Um, because unfortunately we, we don't have one product out there that's kind of a, a one-size-fits-all cure-all if you will and uh, sometimes it takes a, a tank mix or a concoction cocktail if you will to, uh, to, to, to answer all of those wood, woody species problems. So by using a combination of fire and herbicide the North Range is hoping to spring back from drought with stronger and cleaner pastures. Hopefully we'll be able to leave enough forage in these pastures to, for fuel for prescribed fire next spring. And if we can get some of these uh, invasive species controlled or killed, uh, maybe they'll, you know, they'll burn next year also to, 
to further enhance our control program uh, when we use a prescribed fire.